Rosine paints are designed and made right here in New Zealand to endure our unique climate and harsh environment. Quality paints that last. Rosine, it's all over New Zealand. Kayaku nui, kayaku rahi, tēnā koutou katoa. I wish you all a warm welcome to the presentation of the 2020 Auckland Architecture Awards, proudly brought to you by Te Kahui Whaihanga New Zealand Institute of Architects. This is the seventh in this year's series of local architecture awards, celebrating the best architecture in the regions covered by the Institute of Architects' eight branches. Normally, these awards are announced at live events attended by architects, clients, builders and consultants, all the people who make architecture happen. But of course, this is not a normal year and we are all having to do things differently. As the Whakatauki has it, ka mate kainga tahi, ka ora kainga rua. When one house fails, you build another. Although the format of tonight's event is different, its purpose remains the same to recognise the achievements of architects and their clients, promote awareness of New Zealand's architecture and acknowledge the difference good design can make in our communities. One person who has spent her career making a difference is the president of Te Kahui Whaihanga New Zealand Institute of Architects, Judy Keith-Brown. Before we turn to the Auckland Architecture Awards, Judy has a brief message about the awards, the institute and some of the current architectural issues in Aotearoa. Tēnā koutou katoa. Te Kahui Whaihanga NZIA Local Awards are all about celebrating the best architecture of the past year. They are also an opportunity to reflect on the past 12 months, especially the last four, and to look to the future. This has seen our local awards presentations moved into the virtual space, which offers a new opportunity to tell our story to all the people out there watching for the first time. What story will that be? I think one of fresh ideas and hope. Our profession needs to address perceptions of architects as being expensive, remote and unaffordable. We have much to offer and by working closely with our clients, our problem solving skills and understanding of working together will help New Zealand create a more prosperous, resilient and sustainable Aotearoa. As architects, we care deeply about our clients and communities and are passionate about our cities, towns and open spaces. We know what it takes to make homes healthy, efficient and comfortable to live in, designed to make the most impressive difference to clients' lives. When our sons were little, the Lorax by Dr. Zeus was a big favourite. Many of you will know this line from that book. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So now is our chance. Thank you to everyone who entered the awards this year and to the jury for their time and expertise. And to all the winners, Congratulations to your clients and project teams. Finally, thank you Rosine, our partner in these awards for 30 years, a New Zealand company supporting New Zealand architecture. In this very unusual year, the Auckland Architecture Awards jury made its visit virtually via online presentations by the architects of shortlisted projects. The Institute of Architects thanks the architects and the jury for their tolerance of this novel judging process. The Auckland Architecture Awards jury was led by convener Jane Aimer and included fellow Auckland architects Nicholas Dalton and Eva Nash. Wellington architect Stuart Gardine and broadcaster Eric Young. Jane says the awards jury was disappointed it could not visit the shortlisted projects, but she adds the jury was impressed and encouraged by the care and dedication of architects in creating sustainable, healthy and beautiful buildings, fit for purpose and seemingly appropriate to their physical and cultural context. 
While we are celebrating the winners tonight, we want to acknowledge all of those projects that were entered into the 2020 Auckland Architecture Awards this year, and especially the projects that were shortlisted by the judges. Here are those shortlisted projects. That was the shortlist. Now for the winners of the 2020 Auckland Architecture Awards, which will be announced by category. The first awards announced are in the category of commercial architecture. The winners are Sunderland Hangar at Catalina Bay by Cheshire Architects and Ignite Architects. It must have been tempting for the development of the Catalina Bay precinct to simply demolish the disused and dilapidated hangar at the seaplane landing site. But luckily for the new Hobsonville Point suburb, the commitment was made to rebuild the hangar and the original structure has been lovingly restored to be a hub for a sustainable and vibrant community. Fabric Warehouse 2 by Firon Hay Architects. 
This modern insertion into an existing building has transformed a street front facade which gives no clue to what lies beyond, a striking light-filled office space. The open plan workspaces assume the character of a lofty art gallery in order to showcase the client's art and objects and integrated courtyards further enhance the workspace. Ethel Street Warehouses by Fearon Hay Architects in this project, the architect saw the potential of a simple row of steel trust warehouses hiding behind a series of banal office sheds. The revelation of these spaces and the addition of elegant facades composed of new glazing and existing concrete panels has resulted in desirable tenancies for multiple use. 17 Landing Drive by JWA Architects this exemplary project shows how a big box and small office can work in tandem to maximum effect with minimum effort. A process of clever integration has tied together the vertical elements of the office screen and horizontal elements of the warehouse canopy. The result is a dynamic and sophisticated composition that reflects the scale and drama of the precinct's landscape. 17 Landing Drive is also the recipient of a Resine Colour Award. Botany Toyota by Woodhams Mikkel Zahn Architects. Occupying a prominent position in botany, this car sales and service facility has a light and delicate presence for a building of its size. Two large buildings, which are given warmth by the use of timber structural members and plywood linings, are split into separate volumes. The subtle use of the client's corporate colour creates a shimmering effect on the exterior cladding. There are four winners in the education category. These awards go to St Paul's College Marcel and Champagnat Building by Architectus. The building is the first stage of an important start to the redevelopment of a school campus. The building simply and effectively negotiates site levels and is configured and articulated to acknowledge the busy road to the south, a chapel to the east, classrooms and arrival area to the west and playgrounds to the north. The building has a strong yet subdued presence that will allow it to sit well on the street and in the campus for years to come. Dilworth Junior Campus Sports Centre by GHD Woodhead Creative Spaces. This joyfully coloured sports centre squeezed between a motorway and the school's rugby fields has a more playful presence than one might expect from this type of building. Background colours and materials coexist happily with the existing school buildings and careful consideration has been given to creating a sustainable environment. The University of Auckland Faculty of Engineering, the Heringa Ma Taipukaha B405 by Jazzmax and Labworks Architecture and Association. This complex building makes a point of celebrating its function. A very adaptable and flexible plan and section provide the faculty with a highly adaptable facility and materials, colour and detailing, internally and externally, show an awareness of how an institutional building can offer delight to its youthful occupants. The Heringa Ma Taipukaha is also the recipient of a Resine Colour Award. Western Springs College Ngāpuna o Waiorea Redevelopment by Jazzmax. This project involved a massive overhaul of a tired campus overburdened with relocatable classrooms and car-dominated courtyard spaces. The architect's first transformational move was the development of a school master plan that prioritises students, making the connections between the buildings almost entirely pedestrian focused. The two new teaching blocks impart a contemporary university sensibility to the campus. One of the blocks, Housing the college's Māori Immersion Rūmaki unit is the product of a collaboration with local mana whenua artist Graham Tipene. The almost aircraft hangar size opening to a capacious kapahaka stage is a sight to behold. An award for heritage goes to Lucerne House by Godwood Guthrie Architecture. In this thoughtful restoration of a Vladimir Kasala house, impressive attention has been paid to detail and respect has been paid to the intentions of the original architect. The new detached pool house has been sympathetically designed to pay tribute to the original house to the extent that it is hard to distinguish new from old. There is one hospitality award which goes to Kind Cafe by Edwards White Architects. Kind Cafe sits on a busy corner in what has been a rather grim area of Morningside. 
Lush greenery and hanging baskets add vibrant splashes of colour to a grey, semi-industrial neighbourhood and provide dappled shade under a greenhouse roof. Wherever you sit, the cafe is an engaging and delightful space to inhabit. The housing category winners are Bowden House by Belinda George Architects and Mandino Design and Association. This stunning cedar-clad house is an outstanding project. The semicircular plan nestles into the site and the curved form conveys a sense of spatial coherence. The house's natural rhythm allows for spaces that connect with each other and the environment. The material palette is beautifully resolved and perfectly articulated to fit the crescent moon shape. Parikura Bay House by Bosley Architects. Exposed concrete frames define this remote Bay of Islands home nestled into regenerated native planting. Responding to the client's brief, the striking structure is composed of pre-cast concrete frames, creating a rhythm that articulates the mass and gives a nod to the brutalist tradition. Environmental design principles have been well considered throughout this impressive project. Lover's Leap by Bull O'Sullivan Architecture. This legacy project for one of the earliest Pākehā families in the district, whose ancestor signed the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840, replaces the original hilltop homestead with its generations of accumulated memories. The new whare, Lover's Leap, is appropriately austere in its materiality, given its rural location, and pragmatic in its intent. There are lots of areas to kick off the gumboots. In short, this house is a simple and robust delight. Takatu Ridge House by D. Ross Brown, Rosso Design and Studio LWA in Association. This is a calm and very livable house that enjoys a beneficial relationship with the garden, the broader site and the wider landscape. Planned around an intimate courtyard, the house has two wings that provide spatial complexity, natural light and advantageous views. The house is a mature project which demonstrates the benefits of design restraint. Taumata Beach House by Firan Hay Architects. This relaxed beachside encampment focuses on an experiential relationship with the site and wider environment. Three pavilions are configured around a private and sheltered courtyard and balance views of the sea and privacy from the beach and public pathway. A soft, neutral palette of durable materials establishes a sense of calm. This is a sophisticated house which is all the stronger for its avoidance of show. Tutukaka House by Herbst Architects. Once again, Herbst Architects have delivered an exquisitely crafted house by the sea. In this case, a home surrounded by pastoral land and pockets of native bush, with a stunning view towards the poor Knights Islands. Rammed earth construction anchors the ends of the building and contrasts with a veranda-like structure spanning between them. The line between inside and out is blurred in a small house that provides admirable comfort and delight. Waiheke by Patterson Associates. This dramatic form stretches across a breathtaking Waiheke site. The deep cedar-clad roof, which seems to float above glazed walls, expresses the house's horizontality. The rectangular plan and the house's striking form provide spaces to live together or apart, be exposed or sheltered, reside in dark or light. The grand sense of scale is designed to suit highly social clients. Buckleton's Boat Shed by RTA Studio. The house is an expression of fast and playful architecture, the design seemingly whipped up quickly and simply. Of course it's more complex than that, on a challenging site facing south and sitting in a floodplain, the architect created an elevated form incorporating a vertical north elevation that twists to become a horizontal south elevation. Exhibiting appropriate casualness and an informality, the design is an antidote to the obsessively overworked beach house. Reef House by Strawn Group Architects. The Reef House brief was for a family holiday home for a mother and her three adult sons and their anticipated families. The house is a series of carefully planned indoor and outdoor rooms, each having well-placed windows and ample wall space for the client's art collection. Special mention should go to the client's two sons who were apprentice builders on the project and recently registered architect Hannah Scott who led the project admirably on site. 
Parnell House by Stevens Lawson Architects. This finely crafted house uses concrete, black brick and cedar to provide drama and sculptural impact to the street facade. Fluid planning has created moments of delight, such as the circular stair and music room. Cabinetry is seamlessly woven into the architecture to complement the house's delightful spatial layering, and a double-height void establishes a sense of rhythm throughout the space. Number three, by Studio Two Architects. This is a thoroughly livable house that sits confidently in its secluded garden environment. A three-level tower is grounded into the site and paired with a single-level pavilion that extends into a park-like setting. All rooms and spaces have a unique character and qualities that reflect their function. The design perfectly balances habitation, craft and aesthetics. That was the housing category. Now we move on to the awards for housing, alterations and additions. Takabuna Alteration by Guy Tarrant Architects. Originally a bungalow, then the recipient of a post-modern makeover, this house has now been deftly taken in hand by the architect. A simple gable roof with dormer extensions and a newly articulated front entrance and face to the street have restored dignity and coherence to the building. On a tight site, the architect has shoehorned in a comfortable outdoor living space and a small pool hard against two boundaries and established an easy connection between inside and out. Poured Pleats by Jack McKinney Architects a double gable form has been reinterpreted with striking effect in this villa alteration that sits in proportion to the house's heritage neighbours. The concrete roof is a strong sculptural statement that floats above glazed walls to create a vibrant and light-filled living area, and the architecture is enhanced by the use of clever lighting. This is a well-considered, playful and delightful alteration. Sawtooth Apartment by Sage Studio this project is a masterclass in the use of a simple plan and section to achieve extraordinary spatial complexity. A groove cut into the gable admits light into the rooms and establishes an intriguing and original elevation. The impact of the skylights and the natural light they draw into the apartment is dramatic. Modest materials and colour choices are thoughtfully composed, while details complementing the angular form are integrated subtly in the design. Pete's Place by Say Studio. In this project, a tiny, semi-detached Art Deco house has been made into a grown-up dwelling. The clever use of cues from the existing house's form and materials effortlessly transforms the building into a contemporary home with its own character. A clarity of planning and simple moves in section are handled efficiently and effectively this is a perfect example of the balancing of old and new architecture. Lean On Me by Strawn Group Architects. This is a clever addition that provides light-filled, relaxed spaces for the client's family. The original villa had been carefully restored to its glory and works in harmony with the new addition. The lean-to is reimagined as a semi-open plan living area, well connected to the garden, and the house and garden work together in unison. The awards for housing, multi-unit, go to Grafton Hall, the University of Auckland by Architectus. On the site, students who were previously housed in a rather grim nine-storey tower are now dispersed around a series of low-rise blocks. Set amid generous landscaped spaces and sheltered courtyards, these buildings encourage easy social interaction. A more domestic scale, ample natural light and ventilation and well-planned and articulated access routes across the site help to create a sense of community. 132 Halsey by Athfield Architects. An elegant expression of the Wynyard Quarter master plan, this development explores a range of apartment types to provide for a diverse group of residents. The neighbourhood is enlivened by the variation in scale and materials across the three building types, and an expert manipulation of floor plan allows clear access paths and recognition of private areas within the apartments. Careful consideration of the street interface and the provision of public through routes will help the project integrate with its neighbourhood. Sky by Cheshire Architects Set in uptown Taumaki Makaurau, 
This urban renewal project is the ambitious conversion of an old mall post office and commercial tower into a modern industrial chic destination. Clever use has been made of the existing structure and the apartments use the existing structural base to full advantage. Stage one of this project, the conversion of the tower, gave a pronounced uplift to what was a tired part of the city. Stage two, more apartments over commercial spaces which open to a landscape courtyard, is now complete and is helping revive this part of the city. Royal Oak Housing Community Auckland for the Salvation Army by design group Stapleton Elliott. The architects have drawn on a body of social housing work to create thoroughly decent homes that exceed functional and aesthetic expectations for this housing type. The buildings benefit from simply yet beautifully composed and articulated facades and well-chosen colours. Good communal open space is key to the achievement of a high level of amenity and the establishment of a sense of community. The Royal Oak Housing Community Project is also the recipient of a Resine Colour Award. Napier Lane Apartments by JWA Architects. Squeezed between a busy intersection and residential houses, this project makes good use of a tight site. The project has been carefully considered and planned into two apartments, one above the other. From the street, the building appears as two gable forms and the scale and materiality of the project helps it sit harmoniously within its context. Privacy and outdoor spaces have been well handled to produce apartments that are a delight to inhabit. The Grounds by Pedal Thorpe Among the many similar looking multi-house unit projects in Hobsonville, the ground stands out for its clarity of form, expert articulation of materials and elegantly realised interior and exterior spaces. The architect's exploration of cost-effective modular construction suggests a passion for detailing well beyond the usual pragmatic approach. The project sought to create an innovative example of the benefits of mass-engineered timber construction through design, construction and the projected life cycle of the building, and this goal has been realised. One interior architecture project winner is Private Office by Bureau. This impressive office fit-out exhibits a keen attention to detail. The sophisticated material palette has been precisely considered, from the acoustic artwork to the metal curtains, and the project has resulted in a space that is beautifully resolved and perfectly articulated, and which should prove to be of enduring value. There are two awards for planning and urban design. Tamaki Precinct Master Plan by Studio of Pacific Architecture. In producing this ambitious and comprehensive master plan for the regeneration over the next 10 to 15 years of an area comprising three suburbs, the architects have demonstrated a sophisticated understanding of the scope of the project and the tools available for its realisation. The adoption of a people-first approach is a welcome development in New Zealand urban planning and promises well for the achievement of the project's goal of fostering the growth of strong, vibrant and resilient communities. MetLife Care Gulf Rise by Warren and Marnie Architects. To challenge the stereotypical approach to the planning of retirement villages is no easy feat. It takes a brave architect and a bold client to pull this off. In this case, credit must be given to both architect and client for sticking to their determination to do things differently and better. The result is a very grounded and community-based project. This design allows for public and private space and generous walking tracks and gardens. 2020 Public Architecture Award winners are Bay of Islands Airport Keri Keri by Eclipse Architecture. This project is a response to a challenging brief that sought to strike a balance between immediate needs and the anticipation of future growth. The architect diagrammed the flow of incoming and outgoing passengers and drew inspiration from the idea of an eddy to place a cafe in the centre of two streams of passengers. Artwork created by local mana whenua artists grounds the project and reflects its near civic nature as an expression of manaakitanga. The desire of architect and clients to tell the stories of the local iwi is certainly worth celebrating. Hihiaua Cultural Centre by Mola Architects. This cultural centre was delivered after a comprehensive co-design process with the community 
an exercise that was integral to the realisation of a building used and valued by that community. Every centimetre of this centre is carefully designed and constructed. It's not every day you get to design a building next to an awa, with a gantry which can, once a waka is carved, hoist it up and lower it into the river. This is a rich response. Te nākwe, Craig Moller, for this great piece of architecture. The Chapel of St Peter by Stevens Lawson Architects. This is a significant building, uplifting and inspirational. The carefully considered chapel has been meticulously designed to accord with and express the principles of the client school. The symbolic references to the saint after whom the school is named are evident in the architecture, creating a resonant chapel for the college community. The building is profoundly spiritual and will serve the school and its community for decades to come. Te Manawa Westgate Library and Multi-Purpose Facility by Warren and Mani Architects. This confident contemporary public building expresses the understanding of client and architect of the building's role in responding to urban conditions and meeting community needs. In a challenging local authority environment that demands value for money and within a physical environment that is largely retail, the building succeeds in providing generous spatial qualities good use of natural light and a sophisticated material palette. Small Project Architecture features four winners. In Context RTA Studio Exhibition by Andrew Barry Lab. This was a carefully considered temporary installation precisely put together by a dedicated team. Thorough planning was given to every element and craftsmanship was shown in every component, including the impressive model base, 35 perfectly made projects and a delicate paper ceiling. The life cycle of every exhibition component was well thought out, resulting in only a handful of residual items after the project was disassembled. Raoul Hutt by Bull O'Sullivan Architecture. The commission called for the design of a weather station on Raoul Island in the Kermadex and was met with the response from the architects, can we build and install it? After a design process which included ensuring the structure could withstand the sulfuric environment and winds of 250 kilometres per hour, the hut, along with the architect and two helpers, was shipped by the Navy to the island. This robust piece of weather monitoring equipment should fulfil its vital role for decades to come. Te Awanga Awa, Multicultural Fale and Outdoor Classroom by McCoy and Heine Architects. This garden intervention is heroic in its desire to connect people and place and in its ambition of creating a space in which to relax and reflect. The project is a homage to Tāmaki Makauro as the capital of the Polynesian world. Many artists were involved in the creation of the diverse elements of the design. The project is wonderfully colourful and playful, but stoic too, with its robust basalt walls. Point Wells Cricket Club by Pack Studio. It would be hard not to be bowled over by this exuberant folly at the bottom of a private garden. Ostensibly, the Point Wells Cricket Club rooms, this nostalgically referenced elegant shed is a real labour of love. The architects have taken the brief for a small shelter to hold a beer fridge and created at long on, or is it third man, an ode to the joy of watching cricket. The little building is designed to delight and amuse. Point Wells Cricket Club is also the recipient of a Rosine Colour Award. Congratulations to all those involved in the projects that received Auckland Architecture Awards. All winners will be acknowledged on the NZIA website and social media accounts and will be published through media outlets from tomorrow. If you are a winner, you will receive your certificate in the next few days. Please note that all award-winning projects will go forward for consideration in the 2020 New Zealand Architecture Awards, which will be judged and announced at the end of the year. Thank you again to the Auckland Architecture Awards jury convened by Jane Aimer. Thank you to the sponsor of the awards program, Resine Paints. And finally, thank you, wherever you are, for joining me in the celebration of the year's best architecture in the Auckland branch of Te Kahui Whaihanga New Zealand Institute of Architects. Nō reira e te whānau, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a tēnā ratātou, katoa.